Were you reading Twitter or Facebook last night while you were watching the results come in? I was, and I couldn't believe some of the things that I was reading. People were really in there. President Obama's uh, administration, I guess, was tweeting, stay online, stay online, stay online, because I guess they got the word that people were waiting for a very long time to vote. Uh, between uh, social media's use during the election and social media's use during the hurricane and the aftermath, it is remarkable how much information has been communicated online in real time to the real world. And joining us this morning to talk about it all is Chris Desi. It seemed like a very smart use of the cyber world by the uh, by the Obama administration. Absolutely. And it's it's one of those things where about three weeks ago, I wrote a blog post stating how I felt that Obama was going to win the election. It had nothing to do with my political proclivity. It was simply because I had received a direct message from the Obama administration on my Twitter account. And it was very subtly worded. It was, engage your Twitter community and um, get out to vote. So he wasn't directly asking for a specific vote. It was, yeah, you could see the tweet right there. Yeah. It was, get out, turn out the vote and follow slash retweet Obama 2012. And this is brilliant because he's got 23 million followers on Twitter. The campaign is hitting people where they are, right? The average age of a Twitter user, it's me, it's 37 years old. And the average age of a Facebook user is 40 years old. So it does skew a bit older than people perhaps have the conception of it being. So Chris, you have your own social media company. Do you find that more Democrats use Twitter than Republicans? <laughs> How does that work? You know, from, from my experience, what I'm seeing within you know my Facebook feed and my Twitter feed is that it's probably 50-50. However, I do really strongly feel that the Obama administration, his marketing campaigns, they seem to have a better grasp about how to engage properly. This direct message on Twitter was something that was worded so beautifully and done, executed so perfectly that it's it's a it's a higher well, level of understanding within social that media. Twitter became on everybody's ra radar four years ago when President Obama oh, was yeah, tweeting. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, right? that's how he got in office to begin with, it's, right? And it's it, it's that basic formula from the Suave commercial in the seventies. I told two friends, and so on, and, and so, so on, and, and so, so on. on. Absolutely. Right. And you know th that that's media which is free. Yes. You know, you don't need to spend a dollar on a campaign ad. But a lot of people now on Facebook this morning saying, I'm glad the election is over. I don't have to hear my Nobody friends' wants to hear about idiotic it. comments. <laughs> and they don't have to hear my it's idiotic true. comments. It's true. It can All be right. divisive sometimes, but, you know, yes. You can also use uh, social media to bring everybody together, you know, during oh, yeah. the hurricane and the aftermath. People are wondering, where can I get gas? How do I get into work? So they have been using it effectively as well. And one of the best stories to come out of this is uh, a very Brooklyn story. And they, from St. Luke's and St. Mary's churches in Brooklyn, they leveraged uh, Amazon. And they created a campaign called Occupy Sandy, which is beautiful because what they did was they registered on Amazon.com as a, as a married couple would potentially register to solicit things that they would need to help individuals in the tri-state wow. area to help for Sandy recovery. So instead of getting, you know, gifts for their registry, they were getting gifts to take out to help to people, mm. help people in, in, in the tri-state area. It's really leveraging the technology infrastructure that's already there, but leveraging it for a good cause. A very New York story. I love that one. The, well, the one thing that we haven't mastered is there's no filter. For instance, I've heard great stories yeah. about how and where to find gas and where the shortest lines are. Likewise, I've heard stories where people have gone to Twitter, said, oh, there's where there's gas, I just read, and they go and the in information wasn't accurate, or someone yeah. falsely put it up, and so how do we... How do we yeah, there's a story, Fact there's a guy, there was a guy on Twitter that in very hot water, um, I forget the Twitter handle, and he's lucky that I forget that I'm looking at you, buddy. You know, <laughs> this guy started posting tweets as Hurricane Sandy was hitting, and it was all misinformation. And this is frustrating, right? Because those people that are going to social media outlets in order to get their information, in order to communicate and disseminate information to people that are in need, were being bogged down by this individual. Because, you know, guys like May the mayor's office, Cory Booker, who was on earlier this morning, I shook his hand as he was walking out. I said, man, you do a great job reaching out to your constituents through Twitter. Now, all of a sudden, they had to say, listen, what this person Person is tweeting is misinformation. It's not appropriate. He was saying that the the floor of, of uh, the, the trading floor was flooded, and that you know they're shutting down the trading floor. So it's ridiculous. And there are people that do that, unfortunately. I, and then there are good people because, like, when you know, one of the days after Sandy, um, I, I read on Twitter that.
there was mass confusion at the Barclays Center where people were trying to get into the city. And we were able to send our helicopter over, so and cool. we saw it and verified it before so we put cool. it on the air. Yep. So it, it can be helpful, but yeah. you have to fact check. You have to fact check. You can't believe the story. But you can't argue the immediacy of that information in your pocket, on your phone, has proven no doubt a lifesaver during during Sandy and its aftermath. Oh, absolutely. And Instagram sort of emerged as a new platform as Sandy hit. There were uh, close to a million photographs with the hashtag Sandy, um, it, you know, articulating some of the devastation that was happening before news crews could get there. So it doesn't, you know, it's sort of this engaging of civilian journalism and it's this, you know, emergence. I think it's kind of a beautiful thing. Where it's this emergence of, you know, civic responsibility where people are seeing people in need and posting photographs saying, hey, we need people, we need help on the ground right now. There is something very wor worthwhile about it. Chris Desi, what's your uh, tweet handle? Uh, at C. Desi. At C. Desi. I'm at Rosanna Scotto at Dave Price TV. You betcha. Tweet us. We might tweet you back. <laughs>